I remember when, when I was first, you know, uh, talked to. And one of the things was, hey, we, we would like to, I wanted to do a loan. Hey, we, we'll do a loan with you. And I, they, they said, tell me about your bank. And I said, I've got this great relationship with the bank, and this is what they do, and that's what they do. And, that's, and the person realized, wow, for now, they seem to have a good relationship. Let's do the loan. And if you feel comfortable, we'd love to have your money. If you feel comfortable, we'd love your deposits. If you feel comfortable, I, I don't want to, I understand you have a relationship. But we'd like to have your business. And we want to know what it's going to take to get your business. And I'll tell you that what happened was, is the first opportunity, I got a big check in, like a million dollars. Okay, you know what? Let's put it through that bank. Because I just remembered, that person was a nice person that was available and wasn't trying to steal, was just saying, hey, we're offering this. Instead of, the first bank that offered me a loan said, you can come with us, but you must. Give us your life, your kids, your, your money, your this, your that. In a time when, you're tr when loans are tough. Not a good philosophy. For some people, okay, they'll do it. But I want it to be the customer's idea. Even though I want all their money, I want the customer to, to feel like it's their idea and their decision. So I do that by getting in touch with them. Everything is built upon today, upon number one, being open-minded. Number two, not making presumptions. Number three, looking and saying, how do I gain information? How do I learn what I learn? What is it that people tell me, what does it mean when somebody says no? Does it really mean no? You know, when you call multiple times and they tell you you gotta call a certain amount of times, how does the no's change? And, and, and how do you get beyond that? Maybe my technique is different. Who am I talking to? How am I getting to them? And I ask you, what is your target list? How are you getting people? Are you getting people through your existing people? Are you getting people through brand new cold-like calls or warm-like calls? Are you getting people through this intermediary of somebody sends you somebody? So if I was to differentiate cold, no contact, don't have anything, hot, they're already a client, warm, they make a phone call, and they say, hey, listen, so-and-so is going to contact you about doing some banking business. Where, how much of your business fits in each one of those categories? How many of your existing clients are helping you? And how can they help you? I am telling you, people are proud. They're proud of everything they do in their life where they shop, where they eat. Oh, you gotta go to this restaurant. Oh, I'm like a walking billboard for anything I do. Oh, you gotta go to this restaurant. Oh my God, <laughs> and everything's a show to me. Oh, I gotta tell you a story, okay? And oh, you wouldn't believe this car mechanic. Oh, this guy who cuts grass in your life, <laughs> okay? You want to find out how do I accomplish that? How do I take existing clientele first? and cultivate them by giving them information and making them, they're going to brag. You, they'll brag if you, if you give them some ammunition to brag. When you, if you throw in sometimes about what you'll have. If you don't know, pull out, there was one of the sheets of paper that I gave you that's in there that has like uh, advantages of remote capture. Remote deposits. And you have in there flyer that says, oh, the remote deposit capture value proposition. Just an example of why it's so great. Okay? And what powerful things it has. And whatever it is that you have, the concept is that I'm taking a piece of information. And what I'm doing is I'm giving a chance for other people to help me. I'm not just using my own relationships. We're going to talk about my own relationships in a moment. But I'm using the people around me will brag about their bank. Okay? My father, my parents do business with your bank. I didn't know that. I didn't know that until I said I'm going to do a present. How do I not know that? You, yeah, the apple couldn't have fallen far from the tree. He certainly knows how to express himself. <laughs> so what value proposition are you giving to him that's having him say, just like he brags about the place he ate, you know, I have a wonderful relationship with the bank. And I'll tell you, it's something that's not talked about much, but it's just as valuable as the good restaurant. I mean, candidly. It's actually the most important thing in your life. It's the, how you handle your money? You're talking about, you're bragging about a restaurant? How good this fast food joint is? Over where your money? How secure it is? Who's dealing with it? What kind of access you have? I mean, it's just because culturally, we haven't shifted that paradigm. We haven't let people know that this should be the most important relationship of your life. And you should be proud of it. And you should brag about it like you brag about your car dealer and your pizza place and your other things. 
And that's just a way of letting people know, hey, listen, we know, we know that having your money with us is so important to you. And we know that having the security of knowing that people will take care of your money, that it's insured, that you have, that you, that we're a phone call away, that any person will want to come, we know how valuable that is to you. And that's why we care. Oh my God, it's like, wow, you know, I guess it is valuable. Have you told your clients that? Have you let them know that? Have you, do you have any pieces? Come up with a gorgeous, beautiful, magnificent, ocean drive-like cover piece that says what you do wonderfully. Have testimonials inside it. Oh, the bankers were wonderful. They were great. You know, she asked me about my, you know, my kids all the time. Blah, 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 blah. Wonder why? That works. Where do you go? Think of everything you do. Everything that I do, I would like a recommendation. To be honest with you, if I'm going to go somewhere, restaurant, I'm hoping somebody will tell me it's good before I go there. If I want a car dealer, I'm hoping I can say, well, you can, uh, you can talk to the general manager, he's here. I have a friend of mine, he's a general manager, you know, at one of these major car dealerships, it's unbelievable. I call him on the phone, he's the general manager of like Mercedes, you know, world or whatever it is. And I say, listen, I've got my friend coming in, he's got nine cents to his name, but I want him to see you. And he, the guy comes in and he's like, let me introduce myself, I'm the general manager of general managers of general managers. <laughs> and the guy's like, I'll buy anything. Okay? Let people know what you do. I brought some of these magazines because I thought that these magazines help you to, if you use a demographic area, if we were to use Fort Lauderdale or we were to use Miami or anything like that, you look in here, these are people that have money. They're advertising. Okay? They have money. How many of these people? Miami people, how many of these are your clients? Las Olas. Las Olas Magazine, the richest street in Fort Lauderdale purportedly. How many people are your clients? Go Riverwalk. Okay, Riverwalk Magazine, great. Super stuff. Auto Nation, all these other places. Great small, big companies, all the socialites. You know, every, every magazine has these pages of, you know, are you somebody? You know, <laughs> look at the you somebody pages, okay? Gold Coast, South Florida, okay? Gold Coast, we're still in South Florida, okay? We're still in Gold Coast, South Florida. There's 162 ads in here, 162. You tell me, do you have any of these clients? Are any of these yours? Have any of you even looked at this book? Think. Think Magazine, okay, came out, fantastic, it's got all these articles in it, more dining guides and all kinds of, you know, real estate people and all these people, where are these people putting their money? All these real estate salesmen, where are they putting the deposits? Where are they putting, gold mine people, gold mine, bells and whistles, where are they putting those $400,000 deposits on these multi-million dollar deals? Where are the lawyers? holding these monies that are in trust for one day, two days, five days, nine days. Give me a hundred million dollars for a day, I'll make you a billion. You know, if you have money, for however long it is, that money has innate value to the bank. Where are you, are you talking to these people? How many people have real estate companies as clients? How many real estate companies have? How many people have lawyers? I don't mean just lawyers, who are the lawyers with the money? No disrespect to my craft, but who are the ones who are transacting business? I'm not talking about money, people who necessarily might be successful, but who is transacting business? People who have trust accounts, where money's sitting for periods of time, okay? Who, the real estate people, people who do transactional stuff, where they have deals going on. Where are these people and what are we doing to get them? South, I'm still in, still in South Florida, okay? Haven't even gone over, wait till I get over to Naples and some of these other places, okay? South Florida Legal Guide. Get this. It's this, called the South Florida Legal Guy. Wait a minute. Let's see if this is useful for us. On the cover it says, top lawyers. Helpful. Top law firms. Helpful. <laughs> top CPAs. Helpful. <laughs> top financial professionals in litigation support. Helpful. Top up-and-comers. Very helpful. <laughs> top government attorneys. They're all in here. Names, address, phone numbers, bragging rights, and everybody wants to be in the magazine and come to, you know, prominent law firms, and each guy wants to have his own, and, you know, all these people. Okay, I can't get Greenberg Trawick's business. Who works in Greenberg Trawick? There's eight billion of these people. <laughs> How many of your clients? Okay. How many of your clients? What, do you, what can you offer to a law firm that has a bunch of lawyers that no one can offer? If I said to you, I can get your law firm, my dear friend has a law firm, he has 30 lawyers. He's in Fort Lauderdale, Tampa, Orlando, Pensacola, Naples, Miami. What are you going to do for them? What's your answer? Is your, can you tell me five things that when I heard them, 
I would say, oh my God, you got to meet him. Can you tell me three things? If you can't, you need to go do your homework. And once you do that, you need to disseminate that to your tellers and everybody else. And everybody in the bank ought to know what those things are. Because if you do, I'll get you the law firm. Because why? As a law firm, nobody came to me. I did, what, $18 million in a two and a half year period as a law firm? That's a lot of money. I'm not talking about somebody winning a 20, I'm talking $18 million of hourly business. That is like some serious business. Not a single banker ever approached me, ever asked me for the business, ever. I will tell you, if they would ask me, I would have given it to them. If anybody would ask me, just made me feel even remotely important, I would have given it to them. <laughs> I got to my bank because somebody told me that this particular bank was lawyer friendly and he showed up at a, at a meeting and introduced himself, I didn't know him from a hole in the wall, and he said, you know, can we do your banking, we think we do some things that other people do. Okay, what do you got? Well, uh, we wear shoes. Okay, I'm in. <laughs> you don't realize that if you can portray your product and service as a commodity, as something that I can hold on to, something that I can look at, you're going to get all these people. None of these people have anybody going to them. You know how they got the relationship? They happened to stumble into the relationship because somebody's mother's uncle's brother's sister's niece's nephew said, hey, you should go here. And they went here and they said, oh, they treat me great. They treat you great? Okay, let's talk about what they do. And come up with five things that you know they don't do and say, do they do this? Do they do that? Do they come and wash your car every day? Do they do this? Do they do that? Whatever it is. You find out what it is and you say, if they do that, I want you to stay with them. I tell people all the time, hey, listen, where's my resume? Let me borrow one of these resumes, okay? I say, listen, because I get, I get. <laughs> Way to go. That's great stuff. I tell people, let me, let me show you my resume. If you look at my resume, it has some, it's an unusually long resume. It has a little bit about me, and then it has all these, these accolades of these huge monstrous cases I won. And then it has all the published opinions where I went to the Supreme Court and they wrote things. And then it has articles that I wrote. And these are all, every one of these is published articles that I wrote. And I turn these pages for a reason. These are every one of these. If I put these things in 12 point fight, it would be 20 pages long. Here's all the lectures and speeches that I've done. Okay? Here's all the books and compilations. I don't show you this to testimonialize. I show you this that when I hand this to someone, or when my assistant hands it to somebody, when I get in the room, it's, they already want to hire me. What, what do you do? What is it that you give to somebody that when they see you, they go, listen, I, I go against every person you've ever seen on television, all these big, you know, Smith, Smith, Jones, and Jones. I've been against them, and I've destroyed them. I'm a little guy in a big pond. I have this. Who do you want to hire? You want to hire the guy who has this kind of resume, or you want to hire the guy that you think was on TV and maybe has it? What do you have? What are you offering? What are you giving them that is absolutely, indubitably, undoubtedly, I mean, just irrefutably, you. You gotta hire them. What is that? If you have that, people are gonna hire you. Okay? I have to compete with Greenberg, Trawig, or Greenspoon Mart, or whatever law firm, you, you do Hollow Knight, whatever law firm you want to say. Why hire me? Akram said, hire them! They got 970 billion lawyers. Okay? They got infinite resources. Why hire me? Uh, listen, there's only one reason why I hire me. And, and really, one reason. That's just if you want to win. If you don't want to win, then go somewhere else. <laughs> or, I tell people all the time, look at this resume. I tell them, if you can find any, not lawyer, law firm, that has this many published articles, hire them. I'm telling you, if you can find a better lawyer, hire them. I'm not telling you to hire me. I'm telling you to go make sure you have a credentialed lawyer that you can count on. And if you can, that's the person you hire. If you see what I'm doing, I'm not standing up on a pedestal and saying I'm great. I'm saying, let's just deal with facts. Let's just deal with what do we have to offer as a bank? And how is it untouchable? What is it that you could tell me? What is it that I would resonate with me? I don't care if you knew nothing about me and you have 35 seconds to tell me what it is. You didn't have a chance to do your homework. What would it be where the person would say, wow, I'll tell you what, I can tell you that I love that little remote deposit thing. I love that little ga gadgets to me are the bomb, especially when you're talking to men. Love gadgets. You bring in a gadget, you plug it in, it takes their pulse, they're yours. <laughs> 
You know, you, you, whatever it is, what could you show them? What can you give them? What of substance is about your bank? Oh, our interest rates on checking accounts. Well, the interest rates on checking accounts or the interest rates on semi savings accounts are like 0.09431 and the other one's 0.0896 and the other bank is 0.973 only on Tuesdays and Thursdays and then only if you have a minimum deposit of this, it's 0.93. But if you're under the balance, we cancel it and add a percentage back. I mean, oh my God. <laughs> So that's obviously not going to be the selling point, right? I mean, you know, free checking sounds great. I, I could go to you and show you this little handout I gave you. you there there's free checking on like 13 of them. When you do the homework, there's free checking, but none of it's free. <laughs> none of it. You look at the fine print, it's got the fine print, and it's got fine print to the fine print. And it's like, well, free checking, it's only if you have nine billion in the bank and your mother is God, you know. And if you don't, then there's a one dollar and fifty cent charge for every time you breathe. Okay. If you'll notice too, that my delivery of information is not passive. My delivery of information, I've been trying to come out of my shell, perhaps this is the first time. Okay. I'm still waiting. Underestimate, don't ever underestimate the power of communication tools. Don't ever underestimate the power of talking soft or loud or of emphasizing or of changing the tonality. You change the tonality, it keeps attention. You change the tonality, it makes it interesting. You have a good story, it makes it humorous. Okay? If there are ways that you can humanize yourself, you've humanized your bank. If there are ways that people can touch you, there are ways that people are going to like you. Okay? When I, I tell people all the time, when you go in these different foreign states and you try cases in different states, okay, I go to Texas and they're wearing boots and big belts and, you know, they're ha and I'm wearing some snazzy suit and I talk fast and it's not the way they talk over there. Okay? They look at you as a foreigner. You have to understand what persuades them. They have to like me. I tell people all the time, if juries like me, they're more likely to want to rule for me. It's not a guarantee. But I'd rather work with someone who likes me than someone who doesn't. Or someone I'm ambivalent about. Do all your clients have feelings about you? If they don't, why don't they? And let me tell you something, it's not the number one depositor. Yes, the number one depositor, the number one loan, it's an important thing, but it's also those people who you think are conduits to other people. Any service-based industry, and I handed, gave you another flyer out there. The service-based industry, I listed them for you. I said, okay, let's look at the top 15 sole proprietorships in the world, in the United States. And listed them all for you. There's 17 million of them. And they're broken down by food groups. Okay? And you can look at each one of those categories and you could say those people in sole proprietorships who are great clients for you are also big time conduits to other people. They are providing a service to someone. Who are those people? If your person that you do business with serves somebody else, that's a warm call every single time. It's you doing your homework and finding out who do they serve? Oh, by the way, do you know that I serve, you know, I, I'm the lawnmower guy, but I cut all the lawn in the richest area of town? Great! Can you get me in? Oh, yeah, Bobby. Bobby loves me. He owns the world. I'll get you. This guy owns 735 dealerships. He loves me. Can you get him? Sure I can. Everybody. You make them important, they'll want to go to bat for you. So these kinds of things are ways of you communicating, of you looking at geographic areas, of you saying to yourself, what are the types of things that I'm doing? And it's, it's a push-down theory in that when you go back to your banks, what are your tellers doing? You know, I, I did one for the tellers of Bank United, and I said, listen, this is what you need to put. This is a little tape dispenser, post-it note dispenser. You put this in front of your teller thing, people go, that's the coolest thing in the world. All of a sudden, it's a conversation piece. Okay? Whatever it is, an apple. I've got all kinds of gadgets, stuff like, and you put them on your desk. How about this? That, that's a real conversational piece. Okay? Okay? And, and you, you think it's kind of funny, but you wouldn't believe when you make people laugh or when you have, how endearing you are to them. It's not just having a picture of your family next to your desk, which is important, but it's also having something that creates a conversational piece. Okay? That creates something that will, you know, be good. I have this on my desk that you can have on your desk. It's a mirror, okay? 
What's the mirror doing there? Well, in case I want to feel good, I just look at myself and say, you're awesome. Okay, now we go back to this. Okay, whatever it is. I mean, there are lots of different things you can use. Chocolate kiss. Wonderful. Warm, fuzzy. People look at it. For me, they think I have a girlfriend. You know, it's really important. Okay. All these different tools that you can use, the concept is, what am I doing? I'm trying to create something that creates communication. People come up to the teller window every day. What is sitting at the teller window? Okay. How well do the teller people know them? Know the people? Okay. Do you, have, do you have pictures of the people? If you don't have pictures of your clients, you should get them online. Everybody has a Facebook account, and this is what you should do. Give them to all your tellers and tell them to memorize them. And I will tell you, if you tell them to memorize all of them, they'll memorize 10% of them. But okay. Oh, Mr. Jones, how are you doing? Today? Mr. Jones, how do you know me? Because I looked at your Facebook picture. Okay. How do you know me? I just know you because you're a good customer. The concept is all we're doing is arming them without feeling like I'm beating on them and training them. Okay. Everybody should have touch points. Every, get a pen. Okay, I didn't bring one today, but get a pen that's unusual. It's a, con it's a giant pen, it's this big. And sign things with that. Like, what the hell is, oh, well, you know, you got to be different. And they're all chuckling. You'd be surprised at the way those things create. Again, what am I trying to do? I'm trying to create a bond that is not based on a sale. I'm trying to create a bond based on who I am, what I stand for, a disarming capability that I want to get to know who you are. That's what I'm interested in. If after that something happens, great. But if everything goes wrong, everything, you're going to like me. Everything. You ask any employees that ever worked for me, whether they liked it, didn't like it, they would all say, what a guy. What? Why? Because I always treated them with respect. I always wanted to better their lives. I asked you guys, many of you, like, what do you like most about your job? And some of you said something that I, that I believe in. It's like, there's nothing in the world like giving. There's nothing in the world like being able to provide something to somebody and you feel like they're getting something out of it. You know, I motivate a lot of kids, do a lot of high school stuff. Nobody's talking to kids. And when you talk to these kids, and I, I did a speech just recently to, a, to like uh, uh, an all African-American high school. And I got news for you, I'm white, okay? <laughs> all African I got three standing ovations and 70 people of the whole school stood there for two hours to get, my, to get a book signed, okay? It's about connecting. It's about, and what are you doing? And what are the things you're doing? Yes, the sales tools are great, but how are you meshing them with the character that you are? What do you like? What are the things you like, and how are you sharing those things? What are the things that your clients like, and how are you sharing with them? I once had a salesman who worked for me for the motivation line, and he, he, he got, had to go get this big client in, in, in Alabama. And, and, but the guy, had, the, the guy had, even though the main headquarters was in Alabama, the guy was located in Louisville, Kentucky. And he did all his homework and he called up ahead of time and he found out that the guy was a Louisville fan, Louisville basketball fan. So he showed up with two like side court seats to Louisville and he says, you go take whoever you want to them, I'm just giving you these tickets. Okay, I just want to let you know that I, this is the value of your time. Two tickets, calls for and, and he went to walk in the door and the guy says, I want to go with you. Okay? And the guy went with them and it's an unbelievable amount of business or whatever. You know, what are you thinking about? What touches your clients? What kind of investment is that? How big an investment is that really? If you learn what your clients need and you give it to them, it's a lot better than giving them something they don't need. And I'm telling you, that's a lot of power. You have all that power through the internet of learning everything you want about everything. You could have an assistant in your bank to it. You can have any person. It doesn't even have to be you. It's the concept of capturing information. Are you doing, what kind of educational stuff are you doing for your clients? What are you teaching them more about? How, how, what about how they're running their companies? How they're doing this? I had a financial guy who I think is the bomb. Why is he the bomb? I said, listen, I'm trying to make my motivational company grow while I have a law firm and I need some insight. He came down and said, I will spend four hours with you. Just, he happened to be a tax lawyer. He says, just let me tell you what my thoughts are. He said, tell me your whole company. I spent two or three hours talking to him, and the guy, he's not trying to get a dollar from me. He just said, Lohan, here's my thought on this. Based on all the clients we have, here's the demographic that I think is working for us. Blah, 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 blah. And he left and shook my hand. He didn't ask me for anything. I would tell anybody to go see that guy. What are you providing of value to your clients? Every single client has to operate with a contract. Let's get a seminar on what terms you should have in a contract. Let's have information pieces that tell them about differences in companies. Let's tell them about how they can leverage their, their bank accounts in a way that helps you but helps them. 
What kind of plan do you have on, what are you, what are you giving to people when the people are getting you clients? Do you have some sort of incentive program? Whether that incentive program is unwritten, I'm gonna give tickets to the person, whether the incentive is written. For every, the best client, we take their entire company out to dinner. What does it matter? You have to drive business to you as well as you going to the business. So what do you see planting out there to do? I think if you take those steps and you go through all those things, you will find a very powerful and rewarding way to look at things. The next time I see you, I am going to ask you about the questions that you ask to your spouses or friends. So remember, who, what, where, why, when, how, please tell me, please explain. And see what you learn from that. And even ask your tellers and see what you learn from them. I think you'll find that it is just a remarkable and incredible thing. I thank you for your time and I'll certainly stay after to answer any questions you want. Okay. Thanks. Thanks for having me.